Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we have a couple new products from Buffalo's AirStation line of home networking devices. We have a bridge and a router and these are fairly exciting because they are both 802.11 AC compatible. So we're going to start off with a closer look at the router and the model number is WZR-D1800H and uh, just talk a little bit about the wireless standards in general as well as the features of this router. So you get up to 1.3 gigabits per second wireless uh, connection speed using the 802.11 AC protocol. Uh, you also get up to 900 megabits per second simultaneous dual band wireless 802.11N. So it's actually backwards compatible. It can work uh, using both the 802.11N or AC standards. And that's also dual, dual band, so you can connect on either the uh, 2.4 gigahertz, which is listed over here, or the 5 gigahertz uh, wireless band. And uh, you can actually connect individually, so you can sort of separate uh, the data that's being streamed over your network, uh, which is especially helpful if you're going to do media streaming, something like that, you know, to separate that from your from your general internet traffic. And then also with the uh, increased bandwidth available from AC, uh, then you can actually stream higher definition video without stuttering or any anything like that. You also get a gigabit Ethernet hub built in, a USB port that you can use for a few different things, and of course multi-platform uh, connections, so whether you're using Windows, Android, or the Apple operating system, so you can still connect. Over here on the side, we have some technical specifications and whatnot about the wireless LAN interface, uh, as well as the wired LAN interface, and some other stuff right here. I'm not going to read all that stuff off, but there it is if you want to pause and take a closer look. Here's some better information to give you guys a better idea of uh, what you actually get from 802.11 AC. So, now, if we go back in time a little bit, 802.11 is the wireless standard. It's overseen by the IEEE, -E 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 -E, Institute of, of Electric, I, I forget, I always forget what this stands for. Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers, I believe. Someone will probably correct me on that. Anyway, it started with A, which was fairly slow. They bumped up to B, which was a little bit faster. They finally got up to G, uh, which was sort of where wireless really took off, and a lot of people started instituting it and getting wireless routers for their homes. So here's where we can see G's starting off point, which is about 54 megabits per second. Then they jumped up to N, which gave you up to 150 megabits per second. And they've actually been sort of expanding on N for quite a while now. So um, they can actually split the maximum throughput from a wireless N signal, and they can give you uh, double that, and they can go up to N300. And they can, they can uh, do two times two or two times or three times three of that, so they actually give you three individual st streams of uh, 150 megabits per second. So that can give you up to 450. And then they do dual band, so they have one of those going on the 2.4 gigahertz and one of those going on 5 gigahertz, and that's where you get that number 900. Now, if you're stepping up to the AC protocol, then you can actually get that same 450 megabits per second available on the 2.4 gigahertz band. And then when you're connecting on the 5 gigahertz band, that's actually where the bandwidth really opens up. So over here we can see the extra 1300 megabits per second uh, that you get if you're connected via the AC protocol. Um, so there's sort of a chart that gives you the better idea of the difference in speed available, or I should say bandwidth available, uh, using the various standards. Then if we look a little bit closer down here at the bottom, uh, we can see some of the other specs of the router itself. Uh, there's your combined speed. Again, you can't connect to both of those at the same time, but um, you can use math to add them together. So 1.75 gigabits per second total combined speed available. Uh, again, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz wireless band. Auto channel selection to choose the best channel with the, less inter the, the least amount of interference to give you the best signal possible. Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, you get quality of service protocols to help prioritize uh, the network traffic, so you can prioritize stuff that you want to have higher priority. Uh, VPN access, which is always handy to have. You also get USB NAS support, so you can connect an external hard drive to the USB port on this uh, device and use it as a uh, network attached storage. You can also connect a printer, and this actually has a built-in print server, so uh, if you connect a printer to your USB port, you can share that with other devices on the network. Then, of course, web access. Next, we will take a closer look at what comes in the box, as well as the router itself, of course, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. You get some documentation here from Buffalo, so you have an Air Navigator disk right there that will help you uh, get your software installed, as well as your network set up and running. Uh, some important extra information, as well as a quick setup guide right in there. You also get an Ethernet cable there with RJ45 plugs, so you can uh, integrate this router into your network without need for additional extra cables. You also get an AC adapter right there uh, with a 
US style AC plug that you can snap onto that little bracket right there. Finally, you get, oh, what is this? This must be a stand. I will double check that in a moment. Uh, and then you also get a couple uh, screws here if you want to wall mount it. So here's a look at the D1800H router. As you can see, it's got sort of a uh, silver plastic band that goes around the outside of the router. And the sides of it here are sort of a softer rubberized finish. Uh, now that there are a couple um, support feet that I've popped down here on the bottom, so you can use that to set it up vertically like this. You can also take one of those, remove it, and stick it on this end down here. And that is if you want to set it up horizontally, like so. And then you also have a couple mounting points through here uh, that you can use those uh, long screws I showed you with the accessories and mount that to a wall so it would just sort of hang from the wall like that. I'm going to pop this back on. And now let's go over the hardware features of the router. Uh, so starting right up here on the front, we have an AOSS button that stands for Air Station One Touch Secure System. Uh, so if you're using compatible devices, you can uh, push that button to help uh, more securely connect to a wireless device, especially when you're originally getting the router, router set up for the first time. We also have some LEDs right here. So the top one here is a wireless LED, and that will sort of give you some indications as to the wireless network status. There's a few different uh, things that you can do. Actually, most of the LEDs on this device can either flash or blink in different colors uh, to give you different information about what's going on. All that information is listed in the manual. Uh, the next button here is your internet access LED. Pretty simple. So if it's on or it's off, that will tell you whether or not the internet access is available. Finally, you also have a router LED right here, and that will tell you if the router functionality is on or off. And down here at the bottom, you have a buffalo LED, and that will light up. Uh, it can be white or red, and that will tell you if the power is on or if it's off or while it's booting. Again, some additional information on that in the manual. You also have a little pull-out card here with your client access information, and that has your uh, information like the SSID for the wireless network as well as the key that you need to log in and the default security type. The default is WPA2AES, which is a pretty strong level of wireless encryption. It's nice that they didn't go with the default key. They have a randomly generated one so that it makes it a little bit more difficult if you don't change that off the bat for somebody to log into your network. Also located down here is the reset button. It's recessed beneath that little hole uh, so you can use a uh, paper clip or something like that to poke that in if you want to reset to factory settings. Moving around here to the back, we can see our plugs and whatnot. Um, I'll put this vertically since that's the way the uh, actual writing is situated. So up here at the top, we have a router button, and that's pretty straightforward. It turns the router function on or off, so you can pretty easily do that. Uh, you also have a USB port right here that you can see, and they've given you an eject button with the USB port. Uh, there's also a little LED right next to the eject button that will give you some status for the USB. So, for example, if you plug in a uh, external hard drive to use as network attached storage, you can use that eject button to more safely disconnect the network attached storage. You also have your LAN ports right here. Again, gigabit LAN for all four of those ports, and that's where you're going to plug in wired computers to connect directly to the router. Then you also have your internet port down here, and that's going to be plugged into, uh, chances are, your uh, modem provided by your internet service provider to give you internet access to the router that you can share with the other devices that are connected. Finally, down here at the bottom, we do have an on-off button for the router itself, uh, so you can easily switch that, the entire device, on or off. And then, of course, you have a power input for your AC power plug. Now we have one more device to share with you guys for this video, and that is the AirStation WLI-H4D1300. And this is a 802.11 AC compatible media bridge. Uh, it's dual band again, so it can connect both uh, using 802.11 AC or it's backwards compatible with 802.11N or A, B, or G. Um, but let me go over some of the specs on the front and then I'll get more into the device itself. Uh, again, you get the 1.3 gigabits per second uh, wireless uh, bandwidth available on the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, you also get that 450 megabits per second available uh, if you're using the 802.11N compatibility and that's either on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, also over here on the right side, you have a few more of the same features, such as the dual band. You get the 4 gigabit Ethernet ports, uh, multi-device compatibility, as well as multi-platform compatibility. Uh, that being said, let me give you guys a quick look at some of the specs here on the side of the box, such as uh, wireless LAN inter interface uh, specifications, wired LAN interface specifications, some other setup stuff, such as the dimensions. And that said, I'm going to flip around here to the back, because what this device really screams to me is game room. So 
take for example a home where you have uh, several connected devices and let's say in this home you have a router set up somewhere and let's say that router is somewhere that is far away from where you actually want to have your computers uh, your blu-ray players your gaming devices like an xbox or a playstation and uh, you want to connect those but you don't want to run cabling all throughout your house so this is a bridge and what this is going to do is the bridge here is going to use that AC standard to wirelessly connect to your home router so if you have a home router such as the one that we showed you earlier in this video that's 802.11 AC compatible the air station D1300 can wirelessly connect to it and then from wherever you have the, the uh, air station set up you can actually physically plug in all your devices to this product and give them a uh, shared internet connection Next up, let's take a look at what comes in the box. So you get the device itself, which looks eerily similar to the router that we showed you guys earlier. You get an eerily similar <laughs> quick setup guide here, as well as a uh, air navigator installation disc that has your manual on it, as well as some software to help you set up the device properly. Uh, again, those support feet. You get the uh, RJ45 Ethernet cable here to plug the device in or plug a device into this bridge. Uh, you get that aforementioned or a foreseen AC adapter, and then again you get a couple mounting screws. So as you can see, the housing here for the bridge is essentially the same as the router we showed you, the D1800H. Uh, let me just go over some of the uh, features on it. Again, you get that uh, Air Station One Touch Secure System button that you can use to set it up. Uh, the wireless signal here, as well as a 5 gigahertz LED that will tell you whether the 5 gigahertz band is up and running or not. Speaking of which, for 802.11 AC, for those high uh, 1300 megabit per second uh, transfer rates or bandwidth available, you actually need to connect via that 5 gigahertz band. Uh, again, down here, uh, you also get the buffalo with the white LED at the bottom. It'll give you some more status information. Apart from that, uh, pretty much the same housing that we saw uh, with the router. There's just sort of a look at, at all four sides of it. And then uh, flipping around here to the back, it's a little bit different on the back here because, again, this is not a router, it's just a bridge. Uh, but you do get a 5 gigahertz fixed button up here, so you can turn the 5 gigahertz band uh, to operate it only that band, uh, or, or operate only on the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, the benefit of that there is 5 gigahertz band is usually a little bit less crowded, so you get less interference. Uh, also, again, you get the AC compatibility on 5 gigahertz, so if you really are doing uh, media streaming and that sort of thing, uh, you, your chances are we'll want to um, stick with the 5 gigahertz rather than going with the dual band mode. Uh, again, here you get your LAN ports, so you can connect up to four devices. Those are gigabit ports, so very high speed throughput. And then down here again at the bottom, you get a power on and off switch as well as your AC in. And that's going to wrap it up for this video on two of the first 802.11 AC products that we have come across here at Newegg TV Studios. Again, this has been the D1300 Wireless Media Bridge and the D1800H Wireless Dual Band Router. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.